What's up everybody? Ryan here with Trotoway Training. I'm going to get dressed and then we're going to talk about how to create meal plans that shred fat. All right, now that that's out of the way, let's get back to the topic at hand. This video will give you short, actionable steps for how to set up a meal plan that shreds fat. The first step is what actually causes fat loss in the first place. Well, the simple answer is calories in versus calories out. The example I like to give of how this actually happens is a checking and savings account that are joined. So let's say you have a job, you go to work, and you make money. The money comes into your checking account. Okay, this is you eating calories. You're taking in calories. All right, so now you go and spend some money. This would be you burning calories on very microscopic processes such as cell division, building muscle, any tissue repair, uh, all these tiny little things, and then also all the way up to the macro level like lifting weights, playing sports, running, swimming, any of these other things. So anything from the small to the big takes calories and the calories are being spent on these processes. Now let's say we spend more money than we make for that month. No big deal, we have our savings account linked to it, so we just draft the money out of the savings account. In this case, that would be the body fat. So we take in calories, we burn calories, and then if we burn more calories than we consume, the leftover balance that has to be covered comes from body fat. Our body takes the body fat, breaks it down, burns it to use for energy, so that we can provide for that deficit. So the leftover calories that we need to take care of all these processes for the rest of the day, they still have energy because we're burning body fat. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to figure out how many calories that we need to eat in a day to maintain weight. I've put a little equation right here on the screen and I have left blanks so that you can fill it out yourself. So you can pause the video and you can fill that out yourself or you can click the first link in the description and there's a calculator that will do it for you. Now that you figured out how many calories you need to maintain in a day and keep in mind that is an estimate, an equation can't tell you exactly how many calories you need to consume in a day, but it's going to be pretty close. So you figured out how many calories you need to eat to maintain your weight. So now to lose weight we need to subtract calories from that. I tend to take away 20 to 25 percent to start with. So if you want to take away 20 percent of your calories, then all you'd have to do is take that number and multiply it by 0 0.8. If you wanted to take away 25 percent, all you'd have to do is multiply that number by 0 0.75. And the number that you get will be how many calories you need to eat in a day. And if you skip this step, the game is over. The game is over before it even began. You're not going to lose weight unless you're in a calorie deficit period. Now this leads us to food selection, which is what most people think of when they think of making a meal plan. There are three factors that I want to cover in regards to food selection. The first is protein. My rule of thumb for protein is if a meal doesn't contain at least 20 grams of protein, it's not a meal at all, it's a snack. A meal should contain at least 20 grams of protein. Ideally, it would contain between 30 and 50 grams of protein. There are two popular rules that people will go by in terms of selecting how much protein that they will eat in a day. The first is one gram of protein per pound of lean body mass. And if you don't know your lean body mass, that's not a big deal. If you don't know how to calculate it, you can just use your goal weight as a proxy for how many grams of protein you need to eat. So let's say for example you weigh 200 pounds and you want to weigh 150 pounds. Well just go by 150 pounds, use that as how many grams of protein you should eat. So you want to weigh 150 pounds so you'll eat 150 grams of protein. The other rule for protein and the rule that I go with is one gram of protein per pound of body weight. And I go with this one because for me I'm more concerned about putting on muscle than I am about losing fat. I'm comfortable with the level of leanness that I'm at right now, and I want to gain muscle. So therefore, I am 
erring on the side of caution for how much protein I get and I want to make sure that I'm maximizing the muscle gain. If you are wanting to gain muscle as well as lose fat, then you should err more towards the higher end on that protein and go with the one gram per pound of body weight. If you're not that concerned about gaining muscle, then you can go with the lesser number of one gram of protein per pound of lean body mass. Getting an adequate amount of protein is important for two reasons. The first, and more importantly, eating enough protein will ensure that you don't lose as much muscle during the diet, or best case scenario, it will help you to gain muscle while on the diet. This will ensure that you keep your metabolic rate high or best case scenario maybe even raise your metabolic rate a little bit which will ensure that you have continued success with your fat loss because obviously we want our metabolism to be high because we want to burn a lot of calories in order to lose fat the second reason which is also very important is that protein is satiating eating a lot of protein will help you to stay full which will reduce cravings which will help you to stick to your diet which will help you to keep losing fat and the best place to get your protein is from animal sources such as lean meats and low-fat dairy and I won't go into why that is here I have linked an article in the description below if you want to learn more about that you can check that out below it's a little bit more of a lengthy explanation that we have time for in this video the next consideration for food selection is dietary fat Dietary fat is important for hormone health, it's important for skin health, and it's important for transporting fat-soluble vitamins, and those are vitamin A, D, E, and K. Approximately 20 to 30% of your calories should come from dietary fat. For most people, you won't have to intentionally add in a fat source. You will usually get enough fat just as a side effect of eating other foods such as dairy products and your meat. If you do want to add in a fat source or need to add in a fat source, you can add in some nuts or some seeds. The third and final consideration for food selection is carbs. Once you've allotted calories to protein and fat, you will then allot your remaining calories to carbs. And just because you allot only your remaining calories to carbs, don't think that they're unimportant. Carbs are very important for performance in the gym, and performance in the gym is important for continued fat loss. You can use the chart on the screen to select your carb sources. As you will see, the top two categories, you have your refined grains and added sugars. You will notice that I don't tell you to eliminate those from your diet, but I do tell you to limit them to less than 20% of your calories. And as you go down the pyramid, you will see your whole grains, your fruits, veggies and your leafy green veggies and you will notice as you go down the pyramid that those foods become more filling and why is that why are they more filling well simply put it's because they have more fiber in them and fiber is very satiating fiber has an even more satiating effect than protein for most people you should aim to get 30 to 50 grams of fiber per day and this will ensure that you stay full it will keep you from having as many cravings, help you to stick to your diet, and it will also help your digestive system to remain healthy, which arguably is more important in the long run. The next thing I want to talk about is calorie distribution. There are two parts to this. The first is the number of meals that you're eating in a day. Studies suggest, contrary to popular belief, that three to five meals per day is optimal. Now, some people will say that you have to eat six or more meals a day or you won't lose fat. And we've already busted that myth because the number one and most important thing is the number of calories that you're eating. So not only is eating six plus meals a day not mandatory, it is actually less optimal than eating three to five meals per day. Studies suggest that three, four, or five meals have very little difference in effectiveness between them. So that much of it is up to your own personal preference. If you want to have fewer larger meals, go for that. If you want to have five slightly smaller meals, then go for that. You have a little wiggle room there. The next thing in regards to calorie distribution is scheduling your calories. Let me elaborate on this a little bit. When we're busy, we tend not to think about food too much. Have you ever had one of those days where you are so busy that half the day is already gone before you realized you haven't eaten anything? Exactly. Most people tend to be very busy early in the day, 
and they tend to have more free time later at night and free time tends to lead to overeating. So why not use this to our advantage and plan to eat fewer calories early in the day and plan to eat more calories later at night when we have more time available. If you're gonna be busy and not thinking about food, then just go ahead and plan for that and save those calories for when you're bored and will be thinking about food a lot. Here are some additional rapid fire tips that will help you to succeed in your fat loss efforts. Plan your meals beforehand. If you wait until after someone has offered you some super tasty, super calorie dense foods to decide what you're gonna eat for the day, you're going to give in more often than not. However, if you already know what you're gonna be eating for the day, you'll be much more likely to pass up on the food being offered. Batch cooking. It's a lot easier to drive past your favorite greasy fast food restaurant on the way home from work when you know that there's already food waiting for you in the fridge. And plus, batch cooking saves a ton of time. Let's face it, most people don't really like to cook that much. And if you're going to be cooking a chicken breast in the oven, why not just go ahead and throw four or five chicken breasts in there? Then you'll have food for the rest of the week versus just one meal. Reheating food. When meal prepping, you're gonna be using the microwave quite a bit, and some meals are better reheated than others. For example, pasta, depending on how it was prepared, can turn out to be tough once it's reheated. And if the food that you're cooking isn't good reheated, the odds of you actually sticking to the meal plan are pretty low. Next is balance of variety. It's important to keep your meal plan fresh and fun so that you'll look forward to eating the meals that you've cooked for yourself. Some people do better than others eating the same foods over and over. For me personally, I could eat the same meal forever and be perfectly fine with it, but some people don't like to eat the same meal for more than two or three days in a row. So make sure you incorporate an appropriate amount of variety so that you're looking forward to the foods that you've cooked for yourself. On the other hand, don't add so much variety that you're adding in unnecessary complexity because that will also make it hard to stick to the meal plan because you won't want to cook. Ultimately, the balance of variety is up to you. Are you the type of person that likes to eat the same thing over and over again? Or do you need to cook a bigger variety of foods and switch it up more often in order to actually stick to the meal plan that you've set for yourself? And the last thing and probably most important thing is eat foods that you actually enjoy. Do not add foods you dislike in the name of fat loss. That doesn't even make sense anyway. We've already established that the calories is what is going to cause the fat loss. So adding in a food you don't like doesn't make any sense. If you don't like broccoli, then don't eat broccoli. Conversely, don't remove foods from your diet that you do like. If you like ice cream, then eat ice cream. Don't take it out of your diet. It's all about sticking to the diet. You can eat ice cream, you can eat whatever you want, as long as you account for that food in the context of your calorie target for that day. There's a lot more to fat loss than what I was able to cover in this video. I wanted to keep this video short and actionable and I didn't want to go into an unnecessary amount of detail and possibly risk confusing you. I wanted to only put in the things that were absolutely important for setting up a meal plan. I have put several links below where I do go into more detail about several of the things that were covered in this video. So if you wanna check those out, check the links down in the description. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up and go ahead and smash that subscribe button while you're at it. If you found this video helpful, give it a share on Facebook as well. It helps us out more than you know. As always, God bless you and your family, and I'll see you next week.